We're going to come back to this equation and comparing the change in energy of the system to the energy transferred into or out of the system. So we have the change in energy of the system equals the energy transferred into or out of the system. The change in energy of the system, again, is the change in mechanical energy plus the change in internal energy of the system. That's equal to, uh, let's assume that we have no force applied, therefore the energy transferred into or out of the system is zero. As you recall, the change in internal energy of the system equals the negative of the work due to friction of the system. So this is plus the negative of the work due to friction equals zero. In other words, the change in mechanical energy equals the work due to friction. Which again, we've seen before. True. There you go. In order to use this equation, what must be true? The change in mechanical energy equals the work due to friction. Bill. No force of blood. Okay. So unlike before, where we could, this was always true, this needs to have no force applied in order to work. Let's do an example. And don't worry, I made this one too. <laughs> we have an incline on which we have a block. The block is going to slide down the incline and run into a spring. The incline has a certain angle theta. The block is going to travel a distance d. Now notice the distance d is to the top of the spring. Distance d is to the top of the spring. And it's going to start with initial velocity of 0. We're going to have a spring with a spring constant of 400.0 newtons per meter. The angle of the incline is 25 degrees. The coefficient, bless you, of kinetic friction is 0.15. The mass of the object is 12 kilograms. The D that it starts at is 1.0 meters. Again, that's from the relaxed length of the spring. And what we're trying to do is figure out what is the compression, the maximum compression of the spring. So the block's going to come down and compress the spring. Clearly, it would then go back up. But the question is, what is the maximum compression of the spring? What kind of a fuel is that? What kind of a? The coefficient of kinetic friction. Yeah. So it's mu k. Coefficient of kinetic friction. Uh, all right. Now, why can't we really use forces on this problem? Right, to figure out the force, sum the forces when it runs into the spring, and do UAM, et cetera. Brazil. Because it changes once you hit the spring. Once we hit the spring, the force changes as a function of position. Is it UAM at that point? No. no. So you cannot use this. Uh, eventually, you could end up using an integral. We're not quite to that point. Um, so we're going to start with the equation that the work due to friction equals the change in mechanical energy. Okay, work due to friction. What's the equation for the work due to friction, please, Gary? Force of kinetic friction times um, delta r cosine theta. Good. Fd cosine theta or F delta r cosine theta with the force of kinetic friction. The change in mechanical energy is going to be the mechanical energy final minus mechanical energy initial. Let's set our final point down here after it's compressed. So I'm going to put like this. Our final point is after compressing. And our initial is up at the very top. So Zach, what sort of energy do we end with? The elastic potential energy energy stored in a spring, that's going to be final. Actually, I'll just do it this way. 1 half k x final squared minus what sort of energy does it start with? Um, 
gravitational potential energy. How do we know it starts with gravitational potential energy as opposed to ends with gravitational potential energy? Flat. You're supposed to set the zero line. At Gotta the bottom. set the zero line. If we set the zero line at the bottom, note, we have to set the zero line at the point, final point. So I'm going to draw it like this. It's going to be a little bit hard to see because we've got all this stuff in here. So I'm going to specify zero line is at the final point. So minus MGH initial. OK. Force kinetic friction, delta R, cosine theta. Um, force kinetic friction. Uh, Meg, what can we do with force kinetic friction? Uh, you could put in mu force normal. OK. Mu K times force normal. OK. Delta R. What about delta R? You can tell me what that is. Yeah. D plus x. Note, delta R is D plus x, right? Because it goes at distance D before it runs into the spring and x after it runs into the spring, times the cosine of theta. We might as well identify the theta at this point. What is the angle between the force kinetic friction and the displacement? Bailey? The force of kinetic friction is up the incline, the displacement is down the incline, so 180 equals one half. Uh, the spring constant, we know uh, position, f or x final is just going to be x. That's what we're solving for, minus the mass. We have that g times hmm, height initial. Height initial, Loki. Let's draw a picture. Height initial is here. Zero line is here. What's on the hypotenuse? Say again? D. D plus X. This is theta. So what do we need to do in order to figure out the height initial? Um, um, just take the sine of opposite over adjacent. Sine of opposite over adjacent, like this? Opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of sine opposite over hypotenuse. I got it. I got it. Sine of opposite over hypotenuse. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, there's a theta. This is so complicated. The sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. What is it opposite? Height initial. Height initial hypotenuse? D plus x. D plus x. In other words, the height initial equals D plus x times the sine of theta. So we come back here, we have <coughs> D plus x times the sine of theta. Uh, let's identify that theta just to make sure at this point what is that theta. Uh, Nick? 25 degrees. 25 degrees. Remember, that's the angle of the incline because that's the angle in the picture. So this is 25 degrees. So let's come all the way up here. From left to right, give me all of the numbers. Travis, new uh, 0.15. 0.15. Okay. Force normal. Oh. <laughs> force normal. We have to figure out force normal. How are we going to figure that out, Jenkins? Ah, yes, a free body diagram. All right, free body diagram. Go ahead, Jenkins. So going uh, up the incline parallel to it is the force kinetic friction. Going perpendicular to it and upwards is force normal. Perpendicular downwards is the force of gravity perpendicular. And then parallel to it going down the incline is force of gravity parallel. Force of gravity parallel. Now I'm going to put in a dotted line here for the force of the spring. 
That is going to be dependent on whether it's on the spring or not. It doesn't really matter in this particular case because all we need is a force normal. So the sum of the forces in the perpendicular direction equals the force normal minus the force of gravity perpendicular, which equals the mass times the acceleration in the perpendicular direction. We all know the acceleration in the perpendicular direction is equal to zero. Therefore, force normal equals the force of gravity perpendicular, which equals mg times class cosine, cosine theta. That is something you've got to have in your head. The force of gravity perpendicular is mg cosine theta. Okay, now we can substitute in the force normal. <laughs> so force normal, here we'll do letters, mg cosine theta. Travis, keep going. Um, D, one, one plus, plus x, x. Which what we're looking for. Uh, cosine of 180 is negative one, equals uh, one half, what's k? Four times x, which we're looking for, squared uh, minus max, 12 times 9.8 times uh, 1 plus x times sine of, 25. sine of 25. We're almost there. We have almost all the numbers. 0 0.15 times the mass, which was 12, times g, which is 9.8, times the cosine of 25, times 1 plus x. Uh, we'll put a negative in front is equal to 1 half times 400 x squared minus 12 times 9.8 times 1 plus x times the sine of 25. I have a question for the class. Are you going to be taking time to times tests in this class? Yes. yes. In the end, will you be taking two times tests that will determine your AP grades? Is part of that being able to solve equations like that one? Yeah. Yes, it is. How long do you think it should take you? Not long. 15 Two seconds. Minutes. We'll go with 90 <laughs> seconds. Good luck. <laughs> Who's got it? I want it. All right, let's hear it. Maybe 10.63. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to take the time. My, uh, my point is this. You've got to get familiar with using your calculator and solving ugly equations. Don't you worry. You'll get plenty of opportunities throughout the course of the year. But just be aware of that. X ends up being equal to, I believe, 0 0.503 with sig figs, 50.37. Uh, 50 